What cats? <laughs> Hello folks and welcome back to the 80s Toy Museum and today we're taking a look at some ALF merch but not some 80s ALF merch. This is the original ALF plush. It's not my original one but it's just like the one I had back in the day. And This is an old Coleco figure. It's not really a figure. It's not posable. Figurine I guess from the animated series but there's some new ALF merch out and if you're interested in picking this one up there are still some in stock at Big Bad Toy Store. Got a link for it in the video description, which will take you right there. And let's crack this thing open and take a look at all of these accessories that come with them. And I'd like to thank the Patreon tribe for helping pick this one. I just put up a poll on there recently and let them vote on which newer, newish toy to do. And this one beat out Classified Zorana and Sun Man. I will be doing videos for those eventually. Oh boy, everything's falling out here. I'll be doing videos for those eventually. But the Patreon Tribe says Alpha is first. And taped on the inside of this thing is Adam sent me some pictures of his. And this is my favorite accessory of all the accessories they've included here. All of the stuff has dropped out of here, but uh, the shirt, the Gordon Shumway shirt. For the very few people out there that aren't familiar with Alf, his real name is Gordon Shumway. He's from the planet Melmac, which blew up. And even though it was a sitcom, it was also kind of a cautionary tale. His planet had a nuclear war. And that's why it blew up and so came to Earth and they refer to him as ALF, which stands for Alien Life Form. But uh, while the sitcom was going on, there was an animated series in the 80s too, which was about his life back on the planet Melmac. This is what he wore on Melmac. He wore it on the show too because he brought some gear with him, but this is the actual shirt from the ALF animated series. And you can see the difference that this is more of a green, these gears, and it's more of a blue on the original one. Got red squiggles on here. So that's pretty cool. I just recently picked this one up. I never had these back then, but uh, I did watch the animated series quite a bit. So it's cool that you can have both your uh, Tanner guest, Alf, as well as uh, the animated Alf. Now this, this is disgusting. This is one of the uh, Melmachian delicacies that he brings along with him. Kind of looks like something else there. But uh, it's some kind of gross snack that he eats and I can't remember exactly what happens in that episode if something hatches from there. Also got, what is this thing? Some kind of radio. It's a funny set because ALF to me is more this type of stuff. Fun, funny, kind of cartoony looking stuff. And this is the classic, incredible attention to detail, NECA, typical type of stuff. And they've just applied it to ALF. And he's got a bowl of popcorn, of course. Alf is kind of like Slimer. He's all about the food. And again, it's it's just insanely detailed. It's like the most detailed toy depiction of popcorn I've ever seen. A couple of other outfits. That is uh, very, very fragile looking. I want to be careful with that. A whole bunch of different hands can of Fusco soda. So for those who don't know, Paul Fusco created Elf, performed him, puppeteered him. Kind of a Jim Henson in a way. He wasn't just the performer, but he's kind of, his, uh, his spirit is an Elf. And a picture of 
one of Alf's buddies from Melmac, who also appeared on the show. I wonder if he's back here. Curtis, maybe? I don't I don't remember. But a framed picture. And as far as picture frames go, it's incredible. Look at this tiny level of detail, little things that um, hold the backing on. And that is not movable, but it's actually functional. You put it down and it'll stay like an actual picture frame. All the accessories are cool, but the important part is the figure. Let's take a look and see what the elf figure is like. And it has to be pretty rare and pretty unique for me to drop the money on a NECA figure or a McFarlane figure. I feel like I've just bought enough figures of every movie, Terminator, Crow. That um, Kurt Russell, the Thing figure was unique. They never made McCready before or very rarely did. So that was an exception. But it's, in terms of modern figures, the only thing I really regularly collect now is classified. And uh, even that, I don't collect them all. Just the ones that I really like. Uh, pass on most of the Cobras, actually. But this is absurd. This is ridiculous. And when I saw this, I thought, well, that's that's just awesome. And a super poseable elf action figure wouldn't necessarily call it unfinished business because it's not like I ever really dreamed of a super poseable elf figure. I never collected the Coleco ones because I just didn't really need elf action figures. And I got the plush one back then because it was just... It's not something I really played with or anything like that. It just was kind of a, a cool looking pillow because I did love the show. But um, NECA doing an elf figure is just ridiculous because they're known for their really tough, awesome looking movie figures, some TV show figures. And I think the charm of this guy is how he will interplay with those really tough, cool looking six inch figures. I, I'm guessing he's in the six inch figure scale, maybe in the seventh inch, seven inch figure scale. This dude has um, double jointed elbows. This is, like when I say unique, this is unique. This is not a typical build. When I open up a classic uh, classified figure, I mean, that's just gonna be exactly like every classified figure, it's just standard articulation and engineering and it's it's like every one that came before it and that will come after it this is the first melmachian and so the elbows look like there's a double joint there's another one in there one in there oh yeah it's working it's kind of typical NECA proceed with caution type of thing that second elbow joint is tight on both sides See if we loosen it up a little bit. It's a little better after the initial. It's still a little tight though. So Alf, despite being a puppet, uh, was very expressive on the show, especially in terms of body language. So being super posable here, you can get him in any pose you want. <laughs> Spartan kick. Probably, he's got these humongous Melmachian feet. Kind of look like dog paws. And this is cool. On uh, one foot it says NECA, on the other foot it says Alien Productions. Which is what the old uh, TV show was produced under, and, and I think a lot of the old merch too. So, the old Alpha. Doesn't seem like he should be able to balance that well, but he can because of the humongous feet. I'm going to see if one of those classified stands I picked up will work on him too. Yes. It does It does fit. So now you can get even funnier poses with Alf. These are really maybe not worth their weight in gold, but at least worth their weight in silver. These uh, stands are a huge game changer for six inch figures for me. No more falling over and floppiness. 
Look at that. That's just a cheapo little stand. Pretty amazing. All right, let's dress him up in his old Gordon Shumway shirt. I'm guessing it would probably be easier to take the hands off. Don't know if they'll... Well, they do. It's a bit of a tight fit, but the hands, even the open hands, do fit through the shirt. I like to do these little things just for you, the viewer, because I normally wouldn't do stuff like that, but just little things that kind of show you the, um, the tolerances, the sizes of things, in case you're on the fence or curious about certain items and a couple of different styles you can do here with the shirt. You can pop the collar and be a cool guy or fix it. Do shirt open but the problem with a lot of shirts that have the velcro on the inside is then you get that white strip in there but that looks pretty good too. Or close it up. Oh that's nice. Some Cool little buttons on there. Let's just try to line this up with the bottom of the shirt a little bit better. Ooh, he is a, uh, he's had, I think, quite a few cats. That sh shirt's a, a tad on the tight side on him, but it, it, it fits pretty good. And there's some of the, and here's the button detailing on there. Wow, quite impressive. So there he is in his shirt that he wore both on the show on both shows, the live action show as well as the animated. And for some reason, I, I just like doing this pose on him. It's the Bret Hart, how about it, pose. And luckily, I don't have to go and get my Bret Hart wraparound pink shades. I can just take these. And how on earth do these fit? So that's an issue. The glasses, not seeing how these are supposed to go on because of the hair hairs in the way. There's a gap on one side here. You can see right here. See where that light is pa passing through there? Looks like you should be able to fit one of the arms of the sunglasses through there, but it won't fit. And the sunglasses are already um, like they're already angled in. And they're so flimsy. So fragile feeling. Plus this hair is glued on, I believe. It looks like it is a separate piece, but it's, it's not coming out. I don't really want to pull on that very hard, damage that. So this If it's possible, it's more trouble than it's worth in order to get him to be wearing sunglasses. The other way you can do it is just feed them down like that and they can go on the sides of his cheeks, which they kind of fit really well that way. I wonder if that's how they're supposed to be designed. That seems, that seems good. That might be how they're intended. So the old Alpha has some sunglasses and now really all he's missing is the um, championship belt. And you've got a Brett Hitman Hart cosplay figure. He is so rotund. Just to give you a, an idea of the girth of this Melmachian. This is one of the old Jack's belts. And these fit on the big LJN figures, the eight inch LJN figures. It does not fit on the Alpha. It will not close. So he is humongous. One of the accessories fell on the ground when I was opening everything up here. Well, this is horrible. <laughs> it's, a, it's a cat sandwich. So it was a running joke on the ALF TV show that Melmachians eat cats. And the reason, you know, not to break it down and explain the joke or anything like that. But the reason it was acceptable in that day and age, because I'm sure that's horrific to people today. There's a lot of stuff from back then that's horrific to people today. But uh, 
he never ate a cat on the show. That's why the joke worked. He came close several times. Um, the family he lived with had a cat, but he never ate a cat. There was always some kind of thing standing in his way. One time, I think he was really sick, and the only thing that could cure his sickness was cat juice. And the whole episode, they're um, deciding, like, do we have to give this guy a cat? Do we have to sacrifice a cat? And then it turns out there was, uh, there was another cure. I think it was raw spinach, maybe raw broccoli. I can't remember exactly, but he lets that slip at the end. And they're like, why didn't you say so at the beginning? So for the people who aren't familiar with Alf, don't worry. This cat, even though he's in a bun and he kind of looks like he's lunch, never happened on the show. I don't think they really showed you them eating cats on the animated series either. It might have just been a running gag that they referenced, but never happened. No kitties ever got devoured. Uh, these open palm hands are great for holding the food. And the joints are fantastic. It doesn't have like loose floppy joints. This is, this is really, really awesome. This is kind of like the old Coleco figures where more of more than an action figure to, to play around with, he's kind of a posable miniature statue. So there's the for having some popcorn or having him his disgusting slime balls, whatever. This snack is. You can also have him, I guess, he wouldn't be holding this, it'd be on a table, but he, uh, he's really good for holding accessories. It's really not much effort to set this stuff up, have him hold it. That one's kind of the cord is causing the uh, microphone to flop, flop around. And uh, to hold the can of Fusco soda, you're gonna need to swap out some hands. He's got quite a few hands. Gotta have that Ford finger, the Shumway finger. Not sure what this is. It's kind of, looks like Fozzie Bear's hands. Now it looks like a can gripping hand. It's especially wide, so. A little wider than that one. So now let's play. Will it break? No hair dryer, no hot water. Just patience. Hey, that feels that feels pretty not fragile, not rigid. Felt like there might have been a little bit of a little bit of bend to that. That feels less fragile than a lot of NECA figures or McFarlane figures that uh, I've done that for. That fits great. If you're going to do a figure whose big gimmick is holding things, it's important that the figure can hold things. And uh, I'm reminded of the Mandora figure review I just did and all the things that she couldn't hold, even though she came with so many hands, just about the same number of hands as this guy has, maybe more. But that can is, is in there. It's not going to fall out, flop around. It's awesome. And let's try another finger. Whoops. Pointing finger. This is a great figure. Really awesome head sculpt too. Some really nice shading on the schnoz. Got his trademark little, what are they, birthmarks? Warts, whatever they are. I would really love to see Gordon Shumway have a career resurgence and just show up in actual real dramatic roles. Like, um, you know, like Harrison Ford, clear and present danger type of role. I could see him pointing at the president. You know, you you had the authority to do this and that and whatever. Just completely ignore the fact that he's a fuzzy puppet who eats cats. I think this hand might be intended for the radio. This kind of pinching hand. Oh, that is... Oh, that's nice and bendy.
And now Gordon can tell all his buddies, come to Earth. They have lots of cats and popcorn. And this hand can be used for pointing or might also work as a trigger finger. I thought this guy might actually make a good Joe. And you, know, you can hold a weapon pretty good. The finger is in a perfect position right there to kick some butt and take some names. This has to be intentional. The, the big can holding hand, but then this other hand that's a little smaller, a little tighter grip. Perfect for, say, holding a rifle or a shotgun. It, it has to be <laughs> intentional. Um, it was kind of a zany idea I had putting him alongside some Joes, but uh, I think that's the important part when you're an adult toy collector, to never take this stuff too seriously and to keep it fun and zany. It doesn't get more zany than the old Alpha. Uh, he's completely in the wrong scale. I can see that now. I think he's more of a seven inch scale. He's supposed to be a, a really short guy next to human beings. And he's just about as tall as these guys are. I think he's more in the scale of um, Masters of the Universe classics actually. And maybe not. He's still pretty tall compared to this classic He-Man figure. And even alongside a original Kenner or Centurion's figure, still seems a little on the tall side to me. Here he is alongside a sixth scale figure, 12 inch G.I. Joe General Hawk. And he's a little small, but this is closer, closer to what the the actual scale is supposed to be, so looks like NECA went and did a almost sixth scale elf. Even though he's not in the same scale as classified, he's absolutely perfect. Like this, this gun is held in there nice and tight, and then with the securing hand, it's it's got to be intentional. Let's see if we can do him up to look like the Sarge. I don't know if these sunglasses will... Oh, they will. This is amazing. Let's take the hat on there. And now <laughs> you've got a Drill Sergeant from Melmac. At ease, disease. Make like ice and freeze. Or we can do him up as good old stalker. Give him the pulverizer. That one doesn't fit as nicely, but <laughs> it's, it's still uh, it's close. Have it at the ready there. See how he looks with Stalker's beret. The hair kind of gets in the way, but it's it's on there. It's not falling off. And maybe he's got the munchies one late Friday night and the tanners are out somewhere. You can give him Serpentor's air chariot. Got no problem holding on to the, the handles. That is awesome. You can also have the finger pointing to the Cobra minions. This I command. And just to prove that he can get along with some cats and doesn't have to eat every cat that he encounters. He is on Battle Cat. This actually doesn't work at all because of his tail. It's getting in the way there. I wonder if the Classics version of Battle Cat would work better. This one is gargantuan. Still to this day the best Battle Cat figure ever made in my opinion. Look at that. Still? Is that articulated? The tail? No, it's just hanging off there. Still kind of in his way as he's trying to ride Battle Cat. And I can hear the old Alpha's stomach grumbling, so I've got him a veritable smorgasbord of cats here. Got Ravage and a Voltron Lion. Got Battle Cat and Panthor. There's the Snow Cat from G.I. Joe. Whole bunch of Thundercats. And a couple of other cats I want to feature in this video before I wrap it up is some of the Patreon cats. Patreon Tribe cats. Stuart had the fun idea of featuring some of the Patreon Tribe's cats 
in this video. So as the end roll thank you list of the Patreon tribe rolls, enjoy some of the pictures of the Patreon tribe's cats. And don't worry, Alf won't be eating any of these cats. He's, uh, he's changed in his ways. He's changed to a uh, strictly soy and plant-based diet. So right now he just looks at cats as, uh, as pets, as friends. Well, most of the time anyway. I guess old habits die hard. Thanks for watching, and until next time, Nerdmas Day.